Hawaii, California, and Alaska. Today, December 20th, 1906, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, at the port of Honolulu, 15 Ilocano men arrived on board the SS Doric. They were recruited by the Hawaiian Sugar Planters Association to work in the sugarcane plantations of Hawaii. The first 15, as they were called, were all men from the Iloko Sur province, aged between 14 and 56. Four were married, but their wives remained in the Philippines. The rest were single. They were to work on the Ola'a plantation on Hawaii Island. We have the names and ages of the first 15 Sagadas. Simplicio Gironelia, age 56, and his four sons, Mariano Gironelia, 23, Vicente Gironelia, 19, Francisco Gironelia, 18, and Antonio Gironelia, 14. Mauricio Cortez, 21, and his brother, Celestino Cortez, 19. Prudencio Sagun, 28, and his brother, brother. Prudencio Sagun, 28, and his brother, Cecilia Sagun, 27. Filomeno Revolu, 3rd. Marciana Bellio, 28. Emiliano da Sula, 26. Apollonio Ramos, 26. Martin de Jesus, 22. Julian Gallo, 20. The men had signed a three year contract for manually cultivating, cutting, and hauling of sugarcane in the hot Hawaiian sun. They were to be paid $20 per month for 10 to 12 hour days and for 26 days every month. Only Sundays and legal holidays were off. Between 1906 and 1946, over 100,000 Filipino men were recruited by the Hawaiian Sugar Planters Association to work as sacadas for Hawaii's sugar plantation industry. The final wave of labor migration took place in 1946, with 6,000 Filipino men immigrating to Hawaii. By 1932, Filipinos had become the backbone of plantation labor, making up 70% of the workforce. They performed the most labor-intensive jobs, such as manually cultivating and hauling cane and were paid less than the Chinese and Japanese workers doing the same kind of work. In addition to performing backbreaking work, the Sakadas found resourceful ways of living, including planting their own food, fishing, and working extra jobs, while still sending money to the Philippines to support their families there. The Sakadas played a lead role in the fight for labor equality within the plantation system. As the backbone of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, ILWU, their support in numbers, courage, and resilience ensured the victory of Union strikes. Did the Sakadas stay in Hawaii? How long did they stay? At the completion of their three-year labor contracts, many Filipinos left Hawaii and immigrated to California starting in 1909, where rate wages and working conditions were better than the sugar plantations. Where did they go? San Francisco was their main port of entry. Upon arrival, the majority of Filipinos headed out to Stockton, where they worked in the asparagus fields in the San Joaquin, Sacramento Valley. They harvested asparagus from late February through May. The 1930 census reports 45,000 Filipinos in the U.S., of which 56% or 25,000 worked in the agricultural fields of San Joaquin County in California. Alaska and Seattle. At the end of asparagus picking season in California, many Filipinos sailed north to work in the sand canneries of Alaska. The cannery, the cannery work season lasted only during the two to three months of summer but fit well with the asparagus season in California. Alaska was the one place during the summer months where Filipinos in America could get a job en masse outside of farm work. They were called Alaskeros. 
The Alaskaros also included the single Filipino men in their late teens to early 20s who had only up to a high school education and had come to Seattle looking for an education. Many hoped to go to college. They had a desire for education, but also had to work for it. They ended up getting contracted out of Seattle to work in the canneries of in Alaska. The first Filipino Alaskaros appeared in the canneries around 1911, with more and more Filipinos coming in the 1920s. Once in these jobs, Filipino workers realized that there was definitely a dual labor system. Minority workers, Chinese, Japanese, Filipinos, would do the undesirable jobs like cutting and canning the salmon, while those higher up in the chain were able to do the fishing and contracting of laborers. Asians were hired only for the least desirable jobs. Treated as inferior, they faced discrimination and difficulties in the canneries. Because of their mistreatment, some workers decided it was time to organize. The Chinese and Japanese had tried to fight against the discrimination and maltreatment, but were unsuccessful. It took the Filipinos and their union over many years to decrease and eventually defeat the racism in the system. The story of Filipino cannery workers in Alaska cannot be told without the labor unions, especially Seattle's Cannery and Farm Labor Union, affiliated in the early 1940s as Local 7, UCA, PAWA, and after 1950 as Local 37, ILWU. One of the goals of the union was to eliminate the contractors or middlemen in the labor hiring process so that the pay for the work would all go to the workers. Eventually, the union succeeded, but only after much fighting for it, including the murder of two of its leaders. The story of the Alaskaros is a joint story of the Filipino community and Filipino labor union. The union procured jobs for the members of the community, and the community supported the union. From Stockton, California, Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington, Filipino men sailed on ships northward to Alaska to work in the salmon canneries every summer.